So it's really common nowadays to add a lithium ion battery to a project. And unless you want it to catch on fire, you want to make sure it's protected. But once you have that protected battery cell, what do you do with it? Do you just connect it to the system's load and call it a day? Well, it's not that simple. L let me explain. Hey guys, so yeah, this is something I've, I've wanted to do a video on for a while now. I've done two or three videos with lithium ion batteries in the past, but this isn't something I've covered in depth before. Because like I said in the intro, you really don't think of it until it becomes an issue. And trust me, this has absolutely become an issue. And I've, I've had to redo several designs because it's just something that I overlook. So the way I'd like to start this is kind of give an example of what I'm pretty sure the vast majority of people think of when they think to connect a system load to their battery. And this is just by putting the terminal of the protected battery to the rest of your system. So you're essentially hooking up your load in parallel to your lithium ion cell. And while this may work in some situations, it's really not a good idea to use as a generalized method to use a battery like this. And the reason's pretty simple. The way that a charging IC or any sort of charger for a lithium ion battery tells when the cycle is finished is by measuring the amount of current going into that battery. If you have your load connected to the output of that charging IC, it's never going to see no load. It's always going to think that it's charging that battery. And if your load is drawing enough power to where it's drawing a significant amount of charge, it might fool the charger into thinking it never charges. So you're always going to have that battery being trickle charged, which if you know anything about lithium ion batteries is a really bad idea. And something that's pretty annoying about this is a lot of data sheets out there, at least the ones that don't have a specialized power path or anything, which I'll get into, they will show in their example diagram this exact setup. And like I said, this can work, but it, it really has to be a specific case, and that's usually for a system that doesn't draw much power, but you can still run into an issue at the end of the charging algorithm. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to go over three different methods to where you can completely avoid that issue altogether, and you make sure that the battery is never going to get in a situation to where it's being trickle charged. The first and easiest method is to simply disable the entire system's load while it's charging. This is used in a lot of high power applications. Think of like a rechargeable vacuum cleaner, to where when you plug it in to be charging, you can't use the vacuum. The easiest way to do this, and it only really requires one part, is you connect a P-channel MOSFET from the output of your protected battery cell to your system load. Then you connect the gate of that MOSFET to the charging power input, so when the charger is connected, it shuts off that MOSFET, cutting power to the rest of your system. The main disadvantage of using something like this is pretty obvious. If you want to be able to actually use your system while it's plugged in, you can't use this. But it, it has some pretty big advantages. The biggest is it's, it's easy. You just put a single MOSFET, good to go. It also will charge the battery pretty much faster than any other method because when you're charging it, there's no other draw on that input supply. So if it's something where you need it to be charged really fast, this can be a good option. Something else that you might not think of is since you only will be having power to your system when it's on the battery, that's the only way you have to design your logic or your microcontroller to handle. So you don't have to have different, say, states to where if it's on battery power, you have to do this. If it's on a charger, it does this. You just have to worry about it when it's on battery so it can simplify a lot of your decisions. The next setup is pretty similar to the one I just went over and I actually have a video where I'm covering the entire design of a circuit that does this. So make sure to check that out. But basically you take the exact circuit from the previous example and you run the power from the input charging supply to your system load through a shot key diode or some load dropout diode. And the goal with this is to do exactly what the other does, 
but you also get to pass the input supply to your load. So even when it's charging, your system still has power. And on the surface, this sounds like a pretty big improvement from the previous example, and, and sometimes it is, but there's a lot more gotchas with this method. And the main one is, let's say if you're using just a standard USB supply that can supply half an amp, so 500 milliamps, and your charger will charge the battery at say three or 400 milliamps. That means that when it's charging, you're already using, if it's in the constant current mode of the charging cycle, three or 400 milliamps of your total 500 milliamps you can source. So if your microcontroller or whatever is controlling the logic on your system, if you don't feed it the V bus or some other method to let it know that it's being charged at the moment, you can easily overload that input supply because that lithium ion battery you're using it might be able to source an amp or two amps, but the charger can't. So you have to make sure you have two separate states to handle if it's on a charger or if it's plugged in, which with the previous example, you didn't. Another gotcha with this is since you're feeding through a shot key diode, or even if you use like a MOSFET to make like an ideal diode, you're going to have to worry about a voltage drop but then also, if you don't have a boost converter from your lithium ion battery, you are going to be at say nominal 3.7 volts at the output when you are under battery conditions. But the second you plug in your charger to again, a five volt wall supply, you're now at five volts minus the drop off from that diode. So if you're using some circuit on there, you, you have to make sure it can handle five volts ish when it's plugged into a wall supply, but then also be able to run off of the nominal 3.7 volts. Now, of course, you can also just use a regulator or something from the input supply, but I'm just trying to show that this kind of highlights some of the issues with this method. So now if while I was going over that previous example, you were like, yeah, that's, that's nice and all, but I have a project I'm working on. I need to be able to draw my max current no matter what, whether I'm charging or under a battery. I specifically chose this battery because it can source two amps. I can't be limited to 500 milliamps when I'm charging. That's where this third method comes in. And you can certainly do this with fully discrete parts, but cost and time-wise, you're almost always going to be better off using a dedicated IC that supports this. And Texas Instruments and Analog Devices plus Maxim, but I think they got BOP Analog now, they have these chargers which they support what they call PowerPath. And PowerPath is basically, it's a, it's a standard charging IC, so it can charge your battery, but instead of you taking the protected battery's terminals to then supply your system's load with, you take the power from that IC itself, which routes it through a series of MOSFETs, so it has the ability to turn on and off those FETs, giving the system power to either the charger or the battery, depending on the load. So if you plug this charger into the wall, you're charging your battery, and let's say your microcontroller and everything downstream isn't drawing much, like 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, the power path is going to route power to your system just from the wall supply. So your charger is charging the battery and supplying the system from the five volts from your input. So now let's say you turn on a heater or you turn on some real high power load where you can't source that much from your input supply. That's where the power path comes in. That IC will instantly switch the load to your battery so your battery makes up the difference. So you don't have to worry about if you're charging or if you're under a just a standard battery load, you can always be assured as long as your battery can support it, your system will be able to source the full amount of power no matter the situation. Another really neat thing about these power path ICs is they have some really cool features and by far the coolest is Sometimes if your lithium ion battery is fully discharged, 
you have to like do a wake up algorithm to where you just put a tiny amount of current over a pretty long amount of time to get it back up to whatever voltage. But if you need to use your system, you can't for a while. These power path ICs will detect that and they just immediately switch your system to your power that's coming in from the wall. So you have the ability to, when it's plugged into the wall, always give your system power. Following up with that, most of these will allow you to just not have a battery, so you can use it from the wall supply without a battery, and then plug in a battery if at whatever point you decide that you need one. There are a couple gotchas with this method and they have to do with the power that it can supply. The first is, and I mentioned it, you have to still make sure that your battery can source the full load because the whole purpose of the power path is to switch between the wall and your battery. So if your battery can't supply the max load, you're out of luck. The second is most of these ICs will incorporate the MOSFETs internal so a lot of them will have fairly low, I've, I've seen all the way up to like six or eight amps, but they will have a limit to the amount of power that they can pass through. You can get, and they're not nearly as common, but you can get power path ICs that will just control the gates of external MOSFETs. And if you need a higher power load, obviously at that point you can control whatever load you want because you can choose your MOSFET. With that said, that's Back to my first point, why a lot of like vacuum cleaners just shut off the load because it is hard to find a power path that can handle that type of power. So that wraps up pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. I, I hope it was a pretty good overview of kind of the something that's really overlooked when designing with lithium ion batteries. Unfortunately, it's like everything with circuit design. There's no one size fits all solution. But with these three methods, depending on if you have to have your system have power when charging, or if you can get away with it only being used when it's under battery conditions, you can pretty well cover all situations that might come up. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have any suggestions or comments for future videos, please let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next one.